This is a typical compound, it's an antihypertensive uh, agent. What does that mean? Uh, so a sedative to you and me. Um, so you can see here, the key feature of this is it's pretty flat. It's not a lot of three-dimensionality in this molecule. And a few studies over the last couple of years have shown that actually more three-dimensionality in a drug candidate can lead to uh, more success in that candidate's uh, run towards being approved uh, as, a, as a, an actual pharmaceutical or an active pharmaceutical ingredient, a, a pharmaceutical or a drug as you would, I would call it. Why is that? Why do they want that? Uh, well, there's, there's a whole host of uh, different reasons why that may be. Uh, these flat carbons can be more susceptible to uh, metabolism or oxidation by the liver and all sorts of things like that. And of course, receptors that these guys hit, they're all three-dimensionally shaped. You can think of them like a cave. They've got an intricate three-dimensional shape, three-dimensional shape even. And these guys, when they go in, um, they obviously fit in key sites, certain interactions. But if you can fill in a bit of the space around, maybe you can get uh, better selectivity and less um, oxidation and other types of degradation. Okay, so the more 3D a drug is, the better. Uh, it appears that, that that could be the case. So at the moment, 97% of, of lead compounds uh, fall by the wayside through one mechanism or other, and only 3% actually get to market as a drug. So if we can reduce that number from 97 down to even 95, you would vastly increase the profitability of the drug industry and therefore the cost of the actual drugs that do make it to market because nearly always what we're paying for when we're paying for a pharmaceutical is the enormous amount of research and development that these companies go through. And it can take 20 years for any one compound to get to market and if you're doing 100 of those, that's teams of 20, 30, 40 people per molecule. You can soon see it adds up just the sheer cost of uh, these. And clinical trials are hundreds of millions of pounds. And although these molecules often bring in more than a billion dollars a year, so you can see they're incredibly high value products, uh, still uh, there's a, a great need for reducing the cost to the consumer and if we can do that by uh, having ways of making molecules which are, are uh, more likely to, to get through uh, then all the better and one way that we wanted to do that was to create uh, a new way of making three-dimensional molecules really easily because what we are all about uh, in the Stockman group is really simple chemistry uh, to do complex things so here we've got a whole variety of shapes and like I say we made 12 of these shapes in an average of 1.25 steps per shape and we can use these then to go and screen against some useful biological function. So for example this one, uh, let's go back to this one here which is I guess this one, let's go with this one. Well, we, we screen this against uh, a cancer cell line, human cancer cell line, in fact three human cancer cell lines. And what we found is if we, uh, we made a whole variety of these, if we break that bond, so we give it a little bit more freedom, it's still three dimensional, but it's got a bit more freedom now. And if we change this to uh, this group over here, this is called a benzyl group. And this, uh, I should say, is an ester over here, an ethyl ester. Uh, now that is a compound which is active against uh, human uh, leukemia cell lines. So it's a, it's a le what we would call either a hit compound, probably in this case, or the pharmaceutical industry when they decide to take a compound into further development, they call that a lead compound because then you start to build a whole range of varieties of this. The core of the molecule probably stays very similar but the peripheral bits, the purple bits, you can change into various things and you probably make thousands of different versions of that molecule to get the best one. The one which uh, goes into your body the quickest and easiest, has the least side effects and toxicity uh, and produces the most potent results. And actually a lot of these are nat what we call natural product-like scaffolds. If you remember in the title, it says synthesis of natural product-like uh, 
scaffolds. And natural products are where the pharmaceutical industry used to go um, 20, 30, 40, all the way back to the uh, Chinese, the ancient Chinese, have always used extracts of natural compounds uh, taken from plants or all over the place to make uh, interesting active pharmaceutical uh, ingredients. And what we wanted to do with this was to take the, the interesting functionality of natural products and this particular ring system we see here uh, is found in uh, a number of frog toxins and as you'll know from previous videos I've always been interested in those sorts of compounds. There's usually good activity in your nervous system from these compounds because the frogs have developed and evolved these compounds to, to stop their uh, birds trying to eat them and whatnot. So we thought we would try and mimic nature to some extent. Um, so the hypothesis for this particular one came from that and it worked and that's great and we're, we're actually taking this on towards a natural product as we speak. So this molecule here is this sample over here. Now we've not, not got very much in, in this sample. Well, we've taken a lot of these and sent them away to biologists but there's about 0.1 of a gram in here. Um, and you can see it's a, it's a kind of oily substance. Uh, we'll be making a whole variety of uh, different versions of this, different molecules, and uh, using this with uh, some biological collaborators to go and see what we can find, see what biological properties these compounds have. And what are these things here? What are the other two sitting there? Okay, so there's, uh, we've, I've got a couple more. So this is the, um, this is this one here that we, that I showed you, the, um, the experiment on, so that's a, sort of another brownish oil. Some of these are, are crystalline powders, uh, but most of them, because they've got this nitrogen, nitrogen, this blue atom here, that tends to make things, in general, more oil than, than solid. This, this paper and this kind of work, are you kind of designing the brilliant house that everyone wants, or have you, are you just making better bricks? Well, this is a, yeah, this is a quicker construction method, I guess. To, it's not going to solve the world's problems by, by a long stretch, but we're making much more intricately and three-dimensional structures in a very, very much quicker way than was done previously. 